Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and Sydney's not here at the moment because I've got COVID and I don't want her to get it. Anyway, I would, would just like to thank everyone who already knew this and wished me well and it was particularly nice to get some well wishes from those who disagree with my views. I really appreciate that and I, of course I appreciate it from the people who agree with my views as well. And But anyway, for those of you who decided to uh, attack me instead, whatever, I am doing fine. And although I am still testing positive, my symptoms, which were only mild in the first place, are gone. But this video isn't about that. It was about the New Zealand health records that were stolen by Barry Young. And the crazy record level data claims being made about them by Steve Kirsch. So let's get started. So this is Barry Young and this photo was taken in court after he was arrested and charged. He is now out on bail and doing interviews with every crackpot he can find. Some people are calling him a whistleblower. But to be a whistleblower, you have to have uncovered something. He hasn't. He has just shared stolen data with a bunch of people who have misinterpreted it. And just to be clear, the reason he has been charged is because it's illegal to disclose private health data to others and there is no question that he has shared the stolen data with other people. Okay, so Barry knows the names of these 10,000 people? Um, yes, he does, actually. Okay, how did Barry get the names of those 10,000 people? Uh, they're in the, the, the people who died, which is in the database that Barry is an administrator okay, of. Okay, the private database. Has he given, have you seen those names or had access to those names, Steve? Um, I have access to those names, yes. So, Steve, you're in breach of the laws of privacy in New Zealand. You've no, no, I'm not. Restricted, private, restricted government information. No, right? no, be, no, because they're they're. So they're, Barry's actually broken the law by giving you those <laughs> names, right? Uh, um, I I couldn't tell you if Barry has broken the law, but as a journalist, okay. as a journalist, it. No, no. So, uh, so there's a difference so between Sean, a protected source and breaking the law, Steve. So I just want to confirm. You have confirmed that you've breached the Privacy Act in New Zealand. Did you inform the authorities? <laughs> Yes, that's right. Mr. Young shared the stolen private records with serial misinformation super spreader Steve Kirsch. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's have a listen to what Mr. Young has to say. Hello. Could you tell me what brought you to this point of such courage? I am. Um, it's because I, I love humanity so much. It's, uh is the reason and um, we are so precious every single one of us so can we go again just all right, keep, no, no. just keep pressing on all right all right so i'll start again shall i mm, yeah. i just gotta um, miss out massive keep going keep going just keep taping keep off the table too because all right shows. okay yeah, yeah all right um so okay, my, my reason let's do it again my voice is all it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And if you look at me, it's going to calm yeah. you a little bit because looking at the camera, it, it makes just look at me and be with me. All right. Yeah. yeah. Look at me and be with okay. me. Yeah. No, I'm all right. Yeah. I'm so it's beautiful. Crying. It's just my voice. It's beautiful. Right. Um, Take so... some nice breaths. Now, I won't play you anymore because it's rather tedious, but many people are assuming that Barry Young was just some regular guy who happened to stumble across the vaccine information and had to share it. Well, this is something that he posted on LinkedIn over two years ago in response to a post about a restaurant owner in France who was deliberately flouting the vaccine passport requirements that were in force at the time to help stop the spread of COVID. 99% who die are old or have underlying health problems. Virtually no healthy children or adults will die. You're entitled to your own opinions and beliefs, but don't force them on others. My personal choice is I'd rather go to a restaurant as a free man with others with no restrictions, laugh and enjoy life. If I catch the coof and die, I would rather die a free man and not a, as a sad, frightened, pathetic prisoner of the state. It should be my choice, brother. 
If you're vaccinated, masked up and isolated, then it doesn't affect you, does it? Contrary to Barry Young's claims, a large number of unvaccinated healthy children and adults did die. But even if he was right and it was only the old and those with underlying health problems who were dying, his post is rather callous for someone who claims to care about humanity. Oh, and Mr. I Care About Humanity also has some transphobic posts as well, but I won't be sharing them. Now, the data that Barry Young stole were records from a vaccine payment system that contained some details of people who had been vaccinated in New Zealand, but it doesn't contain records for everyone who has been vaccinated in New Zealand, and it doesn't even always contain complete vaccination records for those who are included in the database, and it contains no information whatsoever for those who aren't vaccinated. In other words, the data is incomplete and can't tell us anything. But that hasn't stopped Steve Kirsch, who has taken this data and done some crazy analyses based on a flawed assumption to falsely claim that vaccines are causing deaths in the elderly. But before Steve presented his record-level data, we had to put up with weeks of his post hinting about it, which made the unveiling of his record-level data even more underwhelming. Now, he presented the data all over the place, including a presentation in an auditorium named after him at MIT, a presentation in a small rented room in a building near the UK Parliament, and in an interview with an alleged sex offender. But I will show you some clips from his MIT presentation because that's where he provides the most details on his flawed claims. This is my first lecture. It's called The Basics. There are seven slides, and it's a 12-unit course. Okay, and I am Professor Kirsch. Thank you very much. This is the first slide. Now, I'm not going to go through these slides in detail, but the main thing here is that if you plot the deaths per day since injection of a vaccine, and you look at the, and, you, and the x-axis is, that's the horizontal axis, is the <laughs> days after injection. What should happen in a safe vaccine that is given to a finite cohort, and then you look to see what happens, is that the line should slope downwards over time. And the more uh, elderly the population is, the greater the downward slope. The more, the, if it's a normal population, it'll slope at 0.8% per year is the downward slope, okay? But it always slopes downwards, and sometimes it can go up and down if there's something happening in the background and you're not giving the vaccine over all time evenly, okay? That's, so that's a safe vaccine. Line slopes down. It never slopes up, it always slopes down. This is the most important slide. If you get this slide, we're done, okay? This is the laws of physics. If I drop this, it's going to fall down. It never falls up. I can drop this many, many times. It will never go up. It will always go down. It's the same thing for people dying. People die, they don't suddenly spring from the dead. Okay, that's just the way it works. So this is basically the assumption that Steve's whole record-level data argument is based on. But it is a false assumption because although you would expect it to look like this for a routine vaccination that was given when people reached a certain age or a vaccine that was given randomly throughout the year, it's not going to be the case for a seasonal vaccine. And the reason for this is because deaths don't occur uniformly throughout the year. They follow a seasonal trend with higher deaths in the winter months, as you can see in this figure here showing deaths by month in New Zealand in 2019. This means if a vaccine is given to the majority of people before winter, deaths will follow the seasonal trend and go up. They won't slope down like Steve is claiming. 
Now, obviously, seasonal vaccines reduce seasonal deaths somewhat in those who get them, but they don't eliminate them because they are only targeting specific pathogens and not all causes of seasonal illnesses. And people with compromised immune systems can't be fully protected, even with vaccines. Anyway, time for Steve's big revelation on the data. 60-year-olds fail. This is the New Zealand data over time, death rate over time, um, for dose 2, dose 3, and dose 4. We have less info on dose 4. For 70-year-olds, dose 2, dose 3, dose 4. For 80-year-olds, dose 2, dose 3, dose 4. For 90-year-olds, dose 2, dose 3, dose 4. For all ages, dose 2, dose 3, dose 4. The curve should be flat. Does anybody think those curves are flat? Okay. So now we know why Steve had to come up with a convoluted story claiming the line is supposed to be flat. His record level data doesn't show any increase in deaths directly following vaccination. Whoops. Or as Steve says, fail. It's also worth mentioning that although the headline here says all ages, the deaths are primarily in the elderly and that is what is driving the shape of the curve. Anyway, really an observation by Steve that the curves aren't flat. Of course, they're not supposed to be. Now, I've already mentioned seasonal variations, but there are also other variations directly related to the pandemic. This chart here shows cumulative age standardised excess deaths in New Zealand from 2019 onwards. As you can see, they are highly negative from 2020 onwards. And the reason for this was that the various measures that were put in place to stop COVID spreading also stopped the spread of other contagious diseases, which meant New Zealand experienced reduced mortality from influenza, et cetera. Importantly, excess deaths for the whole pandemic period are still negative, although they are trending back towards baseline levels. And there are two reasons for this. The first is mortality displacement. The people who didn't die from influenza and other contagious diseases in 2020 and 2021 are now starting to die from the underlying conditions that would have made them susceptible to dying sooner, as well as the infectious diseases that have now come back. And this means that the overall death rate is now increasing. The second reason is, of course, COVID. New Zealand progressively reopened their borders in 2022 and in came COVID, which inevitably led to COVID deaths. But it is important to note that although they are now seeing COVID deaths in New Zealand, the overall COVID mortality rate is still lower than countries who weren't able to stop the spread of COVID before they vaccinated, which makes sense because the vaccine substantially reduces your risk of dying from COVID. The COVID mortality is slightly lower than in Australia where I live because we did have a few outbreaks here before we could vaccinate everyone. And the rate is much, much lower than in the United States and United Kingdom, where there was considerable COVID spread before vaccination. And then we have our, our sanity check, where we looked at calendar months, and it's, it's flatline for, um, for people under 60. Right. So even with his convoluted, nonsensical methodology, Steve couldn't find a way to show any mortality issues in the under 60s. Whoops again. Fail, Steve. Okay. So the question is by how much? And so we can, we can now use this New Zealand data to make that calculation. And when I did that, I found about, uh, on average, for all the doses, 216 excess deaths per 100K person years, and if you assume that there are normally two doses of vaccine per year, because everybody's you know upping, getting it um, every six months, this is this is a crude estimate. Okay, so um, it turns out that if you do that and uh, you realize two doses per person year, 
and do the math, um, the answer is one excess death per 1,000 doses. If you wanted any more evidence that Steve's calculations are absolute bollocks, this is it. There are no excess deaths in New Zealand, let alone one in 1,000, just mortality displacement. But there are excess deaths in countries that weren't able to control COVID prior to vaccination, which is, of course, the exact opposite of what we would be seeing if Steve was right. Oh, and by the way, quite a few people have commented and let me know that bollocks isn't a scientific term. Well, gee, thanks all of you people for letting me know. I mean, if you hadn't told me that, I'm sure I would have just put it into a few um, scientific papers. Thank goodness that you told me. And of course, my favorite is the anecdotes. And, you know, the scientists always say, oh, anecdotes, the plural of, of anecdote is anecdotes, and it's not data. Bullshit. Okay? In a world where information is being withheld or distorted, anecdotes are often the best source of truth. Let me give you an example. Jay Bonner, 57-year-old high-tech executive, 15 friends died unexpectedly post-vax. All the dead were vaxxed. Prior to the vax rollout, Jay had one unexpected death in over 30 years. And four of the 15 people who died, died within 24 hours of a vaccine, and three of the four were under 30. Within 24 hours of the vaccine. Like, hello? Wait, what? So after showing data that there are no excess deaths in those under 60 in New Zealand and that there are no excess deaths directly following vaccination in New Zealand, Steve shares an anecdote of someone who claims he is seeing this. Make up your mind, Steve. And by the way, I'm a bit suspicious that this guy could be a serial killer because most people don't have that many friends who have died recently the states. Now, the states have the record level data, but they don't do the analysis because why should they? The CDC says it's safe. So they got the records, but they don't look at them. It's a catch-22. Nobody, nobody basically analyzes the data. Contrary to Steve's claims, record level data is regularly analysed and it is analysed by people who, unlike Steve, actually know what they are doing. For example, the ONS in England regularly compares the mortality rate of the vaccinated and the unvaccinated using legally obtained record level data. Now, the data from the ONS is provided in an Excel spreadsheet, but I've plotted some of it to make it easier to see. This figure here shows the age standardised death rate for all-cause mortality for vaccinated versus unvaccinated people by month from April 2021 to May 2023. The pink lines are the vaccinated and the dotted blue lines are the unvaccinated. And I've used dotted lines this time so that my lovely viewers who are colourblind can still see which one I'm talking about. And just to be clear, you are considered vaccinated from the day you get your first dose. As you can see, mortality rates are consistently lower in the vaccinated compared with the unvaccinated across all time periods. You can also see that deaths don't occur uniformly in either group, which is more evidence that Steve's whole premise is bollocks. Now, of course, there are confounders in this data, but it is quite telling that it is showing the opposite of what Steve is claiming with his incomplete data that doesn't even have an unvaccinated control group. You know what these are? Crickets. That's what I got. 100K reward. I even offered any scientist in the world 100K to come here, and if you, if you convinced people you were right, you'd win 100K. Nobody wanted to challenge me live. And I, and I even opened it up to the anti-anti-vaxxers. So these are the people who, who say that I'm wrong. And I said, if any of you want to come here and challenge me live, I'm opening up the offer to them, and none of them wanted to reply. Well, look at that. Cindy and I got a mention in one of Steve's 288 slides. 
Thanks, Steve. I'm sure Cindy would have loved to have been there, but like me, she lives in Australia. I also believe some of the other people he invited are actually blocked by him, so they wouldn't have even seen the invite. And guess what? Cindy and I also got our own special invite to meet with Steve. Here it is. Susan, I'm on a plane to the UK and would like to meet with you and Cindy so we can discuss this. Will you meet with me? Did I mention Cindy and I live in Australia? So in summary, the stolen data shows no increase in deaths directly after vaccination, no increase in deaths in those younger than 60, and there are no excess deaths in New Zealand, unlike those countries who weren't able to control COVID prior to vaccination. That's why Steve had to come up with such a convoluted story and in an attempt to make the data fit his agenda. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I provide a links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy, who I'm missing so much, a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.